Sport and Lou TV. We're here at the Grove in Castle Bellingham for the day's third quarter final in the Anchor Tours Loud Senior Football Championship. Already today, we've seen already St Mary's get the better of St Bride's in the day's first match. Newtown Blues overcoming St Joseph's by uh, two goals. And now we're all set to see if champions Nave Martin can join the RD men and the Blues in the semi finals. I can tell you that. The Nave Martin team showing up on your screens at the moment. Tom Sullivan was a slight doubt before the game, but he is lining out wearing the number three jersey. And also coming back into the team today for the Jocks, it is the former uh, captain, that's uh, Mick Fanning, wearing number 25. He's back after suspension. Stephen Campbell not featuring today because of his suspension for St. Pat's. Danny O'Connor again absent because of the injury that he picked up in the first game against St. Marcus. We're underway. Colin McCullough has started proceedings and straight away it is the defending champions on the attack and they've got the ball down to their danger man. Sam Malloy lays it off. Now early opportunity here of a score. It's Owen Callan now takes it on his left peg, sends it in and sticks it over the crossbar. The champions off the mark after 16 seconds of play. So the ideal start here for the jocks and the man who has got the score is Owen Callaghan giving the defending champions the perfect start in this uh, game so early advantage for Nave Martin and uh, they'll be looking to build up that uh, early lead Re referee's whistle goes and straight away now coming on to the ball is Jack Murphy big physical presence Jack Murphy one of the real upcoming players in this Pats team and indeed in the county referee signals that there has been a foul on Jack Murphy and he's given the free in so in this first half it is the uh, Pat's shooting into the river goals and Nave Martin shooting into the road goals here at the Grove and Castle Bellingham. Conditions could not be any more ideal. Not a, bre a breath of air out. Absolutely dead afternoon. No sun or anything like that, but, well, it's a perfect opera evening for a game of football in this third quarter final. Here comes the uh, free it's sent in and that one is gone looking good and it's Carl Grogan who has nailed it. Carl Grogan gets the score. It's an equalising point for the men from Lordship. That free from Grogan makes it one point apiece. Just over a minute and a half gone here in uh, Castle Bellingham. As we get ready from the kick out from Craig Lynch out towards this near side of the field. Dave Martin, of course, defending a 100% record in the campaign, having won both our group matches. Not overly convincing or anything like that, but they got the job done. St. Pat's, of course, getting through and score difference. That ball flicked uh, forward. This is danger now for the Pat's defence. Back out it comes. Here's a scoring opportunity. And the score is coming thick and fast here in the early stages. Connor Whelan has got the lead score back. For the Jocks, Conor Whelan with that score. The ball walked from the opposite end of the field. Passed through the hands, walked into Conor Whelan and he puts it over the crossbar. So two points for Nave Martin, a point for St. Pat's and we just two minutes gone. So, well, a good start to this game. You'd have to say both teams certainly taking the game to each other. Nice attacking start from both sides. Back out towards the middle toward now it comes. Getting his hands on the ball now for the first time is Sean Healy. Sean Healy over towards this near side and waiting for it is county man John Clutterbuck. So John Clutterbuck now on this near side of the field. Back it comes now, 22 in the team is Paul Beryl. There was a chance that uh, Shane Morgan might have been starting today had Tom Sullivan not passed that late fitness test. But Sullivan is in the starting 15. Ball now on the far side of the field. And in possession it's Connor Morgan. And uh, the ball is on the ground. There's a foul in there as well. Referee has blown his whistle. Colin McCullough. So it's a free for Nave Martin. So we have two, almost three minutes gone on the clock. And it's Nave Martin by one here. They lead by two points to a point. Owen Callan standing over the ball, but he's not going to take it on himself. He's going to leave it to Sam Mulroy. Well, I can say for definite, there's absolutely no breeze here for Sam Mulroy to take into account here. And this one, it's uh, outside the 45 meter line. This is a... A good distance out, but well, we've seen Sam Mulroy point from this distance before, both for Nave Martin and in the county jersey as well. So let's see if this was is on target to extend his team's lead. They currently stand at one point to the good after those three early scores in the opening two minutes of the game. Off the ground then from Sam Mulroy. This one is dropping in. It's going to fall short. Mac Martin McEnany confidently rises and gets that one. He needed to make sure of that one. That was a good confident catch by the county man. And now a chance for the counter-attack to develop here. Playing through the hands. Here's Desi Finnegan. Desi Finnegan. A lot of experience, of course, in the Pats team as well. None more so than uh, Desi Finnegan. He's got the free as well. Sends that one dangerously down, goes over the head of Conor Grogan, and that one's uh, no difficult in the end for the Nave Martin defence to deal with. It's with Conor Healy, plays it across now, picking out Sean Healy. So one Healy to the other, back now to Mick Fanning. Mick Fanning now flicking it across. So a chance now for Nave Martin to build from the back, out towards this near side it comes. Nave Martin on the attack with John Clutterbuck. Clutterbuck now 
Flicking it across over the head of Owen O'Connor. Not controlled there by Paul Barron. It's intercepted by Owen O'Connor. And O'Connor now gets it in as far in towards the middle towards Kieran Murphy. Murphy now laying it off to Matthew Pagny. Over towards the far side, the ball goes to Joe Connor. Joe Connor trying to pick out the pass there as far as Kieran Murphy. That ball rolls out over the sideline though. And that is going to be a line ball for St. Pat in towards the middle. Collected well by Lenny Gray. Lenny Gray now flicking it back. Now, what can the Pats do with this one? That ball is sent, well, a little bit too much on it. And in the end, a misplaced pass. And that goes out of play and it's given possession back to the Monaster Boys men. Uh, this uh, game, it is a repeat of the semi-final of 2018. On that occasion, the Martins coming out on top, 3.13 to 1.8 in the match in RD. The Jocks going on to lose the final that year to the Blues by a solitary point. And if I'm not uh, mistaken, I think the two clubs here met way back in 1995 in a senior semi-final. And uh, on that occasion, it was the Pats who came out on top. They went on to lose the final that year to R.D. St. Mary's. Now, if another foul committed, this time Pats have given it away. And it's going to be Samuel Roy lining this one up just inside the 45 meter line. So it's two team leading here in the early stages by two points to one. We have just uh, under six minutes gone in this opening half. And Mulroy now seeking his first point of the uh, afternoon. This one a bit closer in. It's the opposite side of the field than the one that drifted in and fell short into the hands of Martin McEnany a little bit earlier. So let's see if Ma uh, Samuel Roy is on target with this one. Here he comes now off the ground once again. Connects with it well, but that is off target. It's drifting over. It's going to stay in play, though. The hands go up in it. A punch comes on it. Back out. It comes to Conor Whelan. This one now sent in. That one is off target, though. It was Tom Gray with that opportunity. And that goes down as Nave Martin's first wide of the... Evening, first wide of the game indeed, as Martin McEnany takes this one short, just outside the big D, and he's picked out the pass to Owen Laverty. That ball sent forward, and now a chance for Kieran Murphy to get something going for his team. He runs into a challenge, gets the free, taken quickly. Now it's with Matthew Pagny. Pagny now sending it over towards the far side of the field. Pat's now coming on the attack. Here's Joe Connor now trying to get around the challenge of uh, Connor Morgan. Back in towards the centre it comes. Kieran Murphy has it. Picking out the pass here is Rory Duffy. Rory Duffy now goes direct with it. This one is drifting off towards the far side. Owen O'Connor looks as if he's trying to get his hands in it. Protesting there that he was held. But no whistle from referee Colin McCullough. So play continues. And that uh, attack has been broken up. Nick Fanning there down in his hunkers. And uh, Nave Martin now are able just to settle it down at the back. And they have it now through Sean Healy. Sean Healy now coming away with it. Chance here to try and perhaps... Going a little bit of a solo run. He's got his free. Referee says that was a foul committed. It's going to be a free for Nate Martin. So two points to one. It's just over seven minutes gone in the opening half. So after that flurry of early scores, the three points that we had in the opening two minutes, the uh, scores have dried up now in the last couple of minutes. But uh, still, both teams showing a bit of early enterprise, let's say. Ball now. In possession of uh, Owen Callaghan again, sending it up, trying to pick out the pass, but that only ends up in Pat's hands, and they've dealt with that one in defence, in towards the centre it comes, and now the man who has it is Aidan McCann, McCann now plays a short one to Darren O'Hanlon, Darren O'Hanlon now that one sent on up towards uh, Owen O'Connor, a little bit of isolated up there, he has to try and pick out the pass, but he was smothered out of it, good defending my name Martin, they close him down quickly, and now it's Owen Callaghan, Owen Callaghan, a man who's quickly regaining full fitness, just like Sam Mulroy, had a bit of an injury after the end of Loud's uh, spring campaign. Here's Sam Mulroy now. That one is drifting off well off to the right hand side and wide. Nave Martin second wide of this uh, first half. So eight minutes gone. Scoreboard still reading Nave Martin two points. St. Patrick's a point. Uh, it's a very calm grove here in Casa Bellingham. As uh, St. Pat's from that uh, kick out. Oh, referee Colin McCullough uh, has gone to ground and he's up quickly. Uh, just uh, just fell a little bit awkward there. We think he was backtracking a bit and just happened to stumble. But uh, thankfully the Toha man is okay. Back out towards Aidan McCann now it comes. Here's Aidan McCann. Nicky Hart, the loud senior team manager, has just joined us up now here in the balcony area. I wonder who he will be keeping a close eye on and close tabs on. But, uh, let's see now what uh, the Pats can do with this one. Carl Grogan, that was a wasted effort from Carl Grogan. Tried to pick out one of his uh, teammates, but that goes out over the sideline. And that's a wide ball, and it's Nate Martin who get it going again over towards the stand side of the field here at the Grove in Castle Bellingham. Picked up now by Owen Callahan. Callahan now has a look up, goes for the short pass to Sean Healy. Sean Healy now coming, soloing out of defence with it. 
So two points to one in towards the middle. Here's Val Leddy now, the Nave Martin midfielder. Gets the pass back to Jack Murphy. The Martins in no great hurry to break inside the pass half of the field. Now they're getting a little bit closer, edging a little bit closer in towards the centre. Jack Murphy, that one is half blocked down over towards the far side. Sean Healy now has it. Sean Healy picking out the pass. Chance here perhaps now for uh, Wayne Campbell, but that one run a little bit too ahead of him. Puts his uh, foot out. The pats man is down on the ground. Bit of a scramble for the ball. And in the end, the referee says that that is going to be a free out. Free out for St. Pats. They're anxious to get on with it quickly. Too quickly for the referee's liking. He's blown his whistle. The Nave Martin man, it was Owen O'Connor just getting in a little bit of a tangle there. And the uh, Nave Martin player has stayed down. And it's uh, Sam Mulroy. It is Sam Mulroy. And the referee now happy to let play resume and the Pats getting on with it now with this uh, free. Darren O'Hanlon now in possession and he's picked out the pass. Connor uh, Grogan, long delivery in, just goes over the hand there and it's, well, it was Jack Murphy trying to hold on to possession but he's, uh, he's picked up a slight knockout of all that and the uh, referee now indeed says that Jack Murphy has been fouled and he's going to get his free in. So a chance now for St. Pats. With an opportunity here to level up the scores. It's going to be Cahill Grogan coming over to take it. So Jack Murphy just hobbling a little bit as a result of that challenge. But it is a scoring opportunity here for the Pats through Cahill Grogan. This one to the left of the post. It's on the 20 metre line. So let's see if Grogan is on target. This to tie up the scores here. His team trailing by a point as things stand. Just uh, almost 11 minutes gone. And that is deadly accurate from Grogan. It's over the crossbar. Cahill Grogan with his second free of the, uh, of the evening. And that now makes it two points apiece. We have Martin carrying the favourites tag into this one, but we've uh, already seen in today's matches so far that uh, the favourites uh, tag doesn't necessarily mean uh, too much. We had the uh, Brides giving the Marys a bit of a game of it earlier on in Clannagale Park, and likewise the Joes performing heroically before going down to defeat at the hands of uh, Newtown Blues in the match in Darver. Back out it comes here now. It's uh, with Owen Callaghan trying to skip past a couple of challenges. Still Callaghan. Looking for a space, takes it on his toe, forced to go back to, uh, to one of his defenders out towards the far side of the field. And now Nave Martin just forced to retreat a bit as the Pats try to get a couple of men behind the ball here. Just try to break this move up. Here is uh, Valdetti with this opportunity, but that's short into the hands of Martin McEnany once more. Gets the return pass. McEnany now flicking out as far as Conor Grogan. Conor Grogan now coming out of defence with it in towards Kieran Murphy. Man calling it from this near side. That's Darren O'Hanlon. Darren O'Hanlon now coming racing forward up over halfway. Darren O'Hanlon down this near side. Chips that ball forward down towards the corner and inviting ball for Joe Connor to try and run onto it. But it's two against one. Referee blows a whistle. Joe Connor gives away the free and the jocks get on with it. Here's Val Leddy up to his, his own 45 meter line. Val Leddy now just looking for options. Takes it. Taking his time a bit getting the pass in. Here's Whelan. Connor Whelan to, to uh, Owen Callaghan. Callaghan now. Easy as you like, plays it across, that lateral pass as far as Sean Healy. Sean Healy now, a man on his overlap, over towards the stand side of the field. Still the Monaster Boys men coming forward with it. Man in possession is Jack Murphy. Back it comes again, in towards the centre here is Owen Callaghan. Callaghan now picking out Tom Sullivan. Tom Sullivan now, a bit of space for Valdetti now, a little bit of room to manoeuvre. He flicks it on, there's a man in space, it's Conor Healy. Conor Healy goes for the ambitious one, but that one is... Well, he snatched on it, added a little bit, and it's gone right and wide. That's wide number three for Nave Martin. And so it stays. Two points for the Lordship men, two points for Nave Martin. We have almost 13 minutes exactly gone in this opening half here in the Grove in Castle Bellingham. The third of the day's Anchor Tours, Loud Senior Football Championship quarterfinals. Victory earlier on, remember, for R.D. St. Mary's over the Brides and Newtown Blues over St. Joseph's. Still to come this evening, St. Feckins up against the Gerald Lines in the match in Stabannon, the last of the quarterfinals. And of course, the semi-final draw across all three grades is being made tonight at a quarter to nine. Those draws will be live on LMFM Radio. That ball sent dangerously up. Mick Fanning trying to just get a touch on that one. The ball breaks and into the path of Sean Healy. Sean Healy now eventually picking up Aidan McCann, trying to create a nuisance for himself there and doesn't get the challenge in though. And it's uh, cleared away now by Conor Morgan. Conor Morgan now sending it on to Paul Beryl. Paul Beryl now for the Monaster Boys men. Running into the challenge there was uh, Conor Morgan. Referee, I think it's going to produce a card. Owen Callaghan. In there, and that challenge on Connor Morgan, feeling the effects of that Morgan, and now Owen O'Connor is being spoken to, and he's going to have to be careful. This could be trouble here for Owen O'Connor. Let's see if it's going to be a card. The referee with the notebook in his hand, and that challenge on Connor Morgan looks as if it's going to result in a yellow card here for for Owen O'Connor. 
And uh, also standing there is uh, Matthew Pagny, but uh, referee having words with both players. And uh, it looks as if it's perhaps Pagny. The challenge went in from Owen O'Connor uh, for what we could make out, but it's Matthew Pagny that has also been spoken to. But I think it's Owen O'Connor, the man that is going to uh, get the card out of all this. And Colin, oh, Colin McCullough still scribbling away in his notebook and having words with both players. So let's see now what the end product will be. And it's a yellow card for Owen O'Connor and it's a yellow card as well for Matthew Pagny. So two players receiving yellow cards out of that incident. Matthew Pagny and Owen O'Connor, both Pats players. And uh, we're ready now, almost ready to go with this, uh, with this free. So it's going to be Sam Mulroy yet to get off the mark in this game. Two points apiece after that rush of early scores. We haven't had a score now. And well, in the last four minutes, we went to, what, nine minutes before that score since the last one from Conor Whelan. So it's uh, Sam Mulroy, this one again from distance. It's a good 40, 48 metres or so out from the post. Slightly to the left of the uh, post. So let's see, off the ground, here he comes. And this one is drifting in. It's gone in, but it has gone left and wide from Sam Mulroy. That's wide number four for the Jocks in this first half. We have almost 16 minutes gone in this opening period. So it stays level pegging as Desi Finnegan takes receipt of that short kick out from Martin McEnany. Flicks it out towards Darren O'Hanlon. Back into Desi Finnegan once again. Desi Finnegan instructing Kieran Murphy where to play that ball. Across there it goes to Matthew Pagny. Here is uh, Conor Grogan now in possession. Grogan now spots a man in space. That's Darren O'Hanlon, the former county man. Decides to take on the challenge of Paul Beryl. Does well. That one's sent forward by Conor Grogan into the path of Owen O'Connor. Owen O'Connor. Now what can he do with it? Decides to go all the way back. And that's a loose one. And it's cut out. And Owen O'Callan read that superbly. And now he's robbed possession back for the jocks. Up over the Pats 45 meter line. Down this near side. Still Owen O'Callan stepping on the brakes. Plays it into space. Not the best of balls. Did well initially of course to break up that Pats move. But... That uh, pass didn't work out and Desi Finnegan using all his experience and guile to read that situation best of all. Here's Darren O'Hanlon flicking it to his outside to Matthew Pagny. Pagny now, so a chance now for St. Pat's to break. Here's O'Hanlon once again, Darren O'Hanlon that is. Back to Conor Grogan once more. Still Carl Grogan I should say. Carl Grogan now plays a short and gets the return pass. Still Carl Grogan forced to flick it back. Pat's now looking for a bit of space and oh, that's a poor pass and they've given it straight back. That one is intercepted easily in the end. It was John Clutterbuck who stuck out his hands there and intercepted that one. And now a chance for Nate Martin to uh, break. It's with uh, Owen Callaghan. Owen Callaghan now. Valetti has made the forward run, but instead the pass is, uh, goes to Jack Murphy. Jack Murphy now just inside the pass, 45 meter line. Trying to stand him up down this near side is Rory Duffy. Here's Owen Callaghan now once again. Owen Callaghan thought about the fisted pass, but instead goes backwards with it to Jack Murphy. Murphy now. And uh, easy as you like, the man in acres of space here is Sean Healy They're in that middle toward Pats uh, again putting plenty of bodies behind the ball here the only man indeed inside there well there's actually in the Owen O'Connor is very isolated up towards the uh, the, the jocks uh, goal standing beside Craig Lynch but it's his Nave Martin coming the attack Owen Callan is looking for the pass here on this near side now he gets it Coming from that pass coming from Conor Morgan, still uh, Owen Callaghan, just outside the 45 meter line, shadowing him all the way here is Lenny Gray, still Owen Callaghan though. Owen Callaghan now picking out the pass, finding uh, John Clutterbuck, back out it comes now in towards the middle once more, it's Sean Healy. This is all very patient from uh, Nave Martin, not in any great rush here at the moment, just a matter of retaining possession. Here's Conor Healy. Conor Healy now soloing in towards the 45 meter line. Now it's with Clutterbuck when he loses his footing. Has to be careful not to give away possession. That's what he's done just momentarily though. Back out it comes here, Sam Mulroy. Sam Mulroy is a sniff at the post. He goes for the score. But this one is drifting in and it's gone right. Or left and wide. Left and wide once again. Five wides now for Nate Martin. The jocks turning over possession but in the end didn't make a count of the scoreboard and Sam Mulroy with another wide it stays two points apiece we have 19 minutes that's uh, four wides for, so far in this uh, first half for Sam Mulroy uncharacteristic the uh, county captain I'm, not sure, I'm sure it won't be too long before he's eventually off the mark 
And uh, it's Aidan McCann now who has it for St. Pat's down towards Rory Duffy, flicking it inside. This is promising. That one, Jack Murphy gets his hands on it. Now it's at Owen O'Connor. Owen O'Connor always oh, it blocked down and perfectly placed. There was Paul Barrell to intercept that one. Uh, good intentions there by St. Pat's, but Owen O'Connor saw his effort blocked down. St. Pat's have to be taking those sort of chances. And uh, the referee has blown his whistle. It's going to be a jocks free. It's going to be taken by Connor Healy. Connor Healy. So a game really that started. 100 mile an hour, we had a very entertaining start to the game with those early scores but there has been a bit of a lull, a few mistakes being made by both teams and certainly the scoring rate has died down as well that ball played forward now, a chance perhaps here for Tom Gray, can he finish it off at a point, oh that's, that's much better it's over the crossbar, Tom Gray has got the point for the Monaster Boys men that's uh, pretty direct stuff there from Nate Martin and they've got the rewards as well, they now lead again by 3 points to 2, we have almost 20 minutes gone in this opening half so one the difference between the teams well we did certainly think that this was going to be a bit of a battle for the defending champions and so far it's proving that only one the difference between the teams as uh, the ball referee blows his whistle there was a push there the man giving away the free was Val Leddy it's going to be taken Owen Laverty is the man that is going to take it and he's going to in fact leave it now to Carl Grogan and he's not going to leave it to Grogan. He's going to leave it, in fact, to goalkeeper Martin McEnany. Well, that score that he got later on in the match against the Moctis, one that will live long in the memory. This one is a good distance out as well. This is about 47, 48 metres out from the post. It's just in from this near sideline. Uh, dressing room side, clubhouse side of the field here at the Grove. So it is McEnany. This opportunity to tie up those scores. And uh, he struck it well. It's going to fall in dangerously short. The uh, hands go up on that one. It's punched away, flicked away by Tom Sullivan in the end into the path of Owen Callahan. Callahan now soloing out of defence with it over towards the far side. Man with his hands on it there was Jack Murphy. Murphy now inside to Sean Healy. And Healy spots as a man in space. And that's John Clutterbuck. So Clutterbuck now coming running forward with this one. So that opportunity for St. Pat's comes to nothing. Martin McEnany had a race back quickly to his goals. Here's still John Clutterbuck. Looking for the pass, still Clutterbuck has to be careful not to give away, he's touched it on the ground. Mistake from John Clutterbuck and he gives away possession. And it's going to be a free instead for St. Pat's, which Aidan McCann is going to take. Goes for the short one. Picking out uh, Matthew Pagny, Pagny now has options, here's Rory Duffy. Duffy now across, it goes to Desi Finnegan. Oh, Desi Finnegan, almost intercepted. Darren O'Hanlon now had to be quick to flick that one away. And now it's with Owen Laverty. Owen Laverty now, the pass full back now, being shouted all the way by... Two uh, Nate Martin players gets the pass away to Rory Duffy in towards the middle now. Here's Darren O'Hanlon now once again. Darren O'Hanlon across to far side of the field to Matthew Panyi once more. Panyi now has a look up. Goes for the pass. Back to Kieran Murphy. Kieran Murphy has it now with number six in his back. Now joining the attack, Connor Grogan right at the centre of the field. Fancies running this one on a little bit further. Goes for the direct one. In it goes to up towards Jack Murphy. It's knocked down. Good defending on Jack Murphy. Well, the uh, Martins have given away the free. Didn't look to be a whole lot in that, but Jack Murphy will take that one and the Pats will take it all day long. And it was Paul Beryl, the man I think that was penalised. Two players went up and Jack Murphy, referee, deemed that to be a foul. And it's a free in for the men from Lordship. And this to level the scores up once again. And it is that man, Carl Grogan. He's already got both our scores, both from free so far. So this to bring up the hat-trick from his own point of view and to level it up at three points apiece. We have 23 minutes almost gone in this first half. Little between the teams here. The defending champions, of course, Nave Martin going for the three in a row this season. Here comes the uh, free. And easy as you like from Carl Grogan. He puts it over the crossbar. And that now makes it a draw game. Once again, Grogan with the free. So almost 23 minutes gone. Pats back on level terms. And that kick out from Craig Lynch. Well, it was a little bit uh, loose and it's uh, given possession. That one, a touch on the ground. Another mistake made by Nate Martin. They give away uh, another scoring opportunity. It was uh, scooped up directly off the ground. And now a chance again for Carl, for, uh, Carl Grogan to punish that misdemeanor, if you like. The ball came back out and it was touching the ground. Colin McCullough quick to blow his whistle and now Kyle Grogan to put his team ahead here in this uh, match for the first time. So let's see if this is on target. It's just outside the, it's on the 20 metre line. In fact, it's out on the right hand side this time. And this one is looking good. The umpire puts his hand up. Now he puts his flag up and Kyle Grogan with the free makes it now. Four points to the men from Lordship. Three points for Nave Martin. Interesting this game as it develops 
And uh, questions now of Dave Martin, but a long, long way to go, of course, in this contest. But at the moment, St. Pat's are very much in this and leading by a point and asking questions here of the defending champions. Here is John Clutterbuck now. A lot of space opening up ahead of him. What can he do with this one? Flicks it inside. That's an intelligent ball to Samuel Roy. Samuel Roy now looking for his first score. He's going to go for the goal. He rolls into the back of the net. That's quality. Clutterbuck sending it in to Samuel Roy. Perfect pass. And Samuel Roy, well, he had four wides earlier on. But no mistaking the quality of that finish from Sam Mulroy. You give him an inch, he takes a mile. And Sam Mulroy, a superlative finish from the county captain. And after all the good work the Pats did and getting the lead for themselves at four points to three, they now trail. Well, games like this can swing in moments like that. And Sam Mulroy, the goal scorer, took it beautifully, giving Martin McEnany no chance. The goal arriving after almost 25 minutes of play. And that now... Puts a, a different slant on the situation here. It's the Martins now leading by two. And now St. Pat's, they have to be, try and respond from that knockback and that setback. Here's Desi Finnegan taking the pass from Owen O'Connor. And Desi Finnegan running into the challenge and the referee penalising Desi Finnegan there. And uh, didn't look to be too much in that. It looked like a, a fair challenge, but uh, referee saw it otherwise. He's given the free to Nave Martin. It's taken by uh, Sean Healy. Back to his goalkeeper, Craig Lynch. So it's a two-point game. Nave Martin have turned it around with that goal from Sam Mulroy after 25 minutes of play. Well, never a bad time to get a goal, but with five minutes or so to go to half-time, psychologically, that's a, a huge boost to the defending champions. Desi Finnegan going in there and Paul Beryl. Uh, referee didn't see anything untoward in that challenge here's Valletti now he blows his whistle and he's given Nave Martin the free in so a free for Nave Martin almost 26 minutes gone in the first half as Sam Mulroy gets ready to line this uh, one up for his team so Sam Mulroy with that all important goal referee now having a word with Rory Duffy and uh, that uh, little bit of a word didn't produce a card or anything like that so referee just happy just to have a word with Rory Duffy and allowed play to continue with this kick now from Sam Mulroy. So again, it's going to be off the ground. And this one, about 43 metres or so out from the post. And Sam Mulroy, well, he'll obviously be taking confidence and heart from that goal that he converted just a couple of minutes ago. Now, can he get his first point on the board and extend his team's lead to three points at a crucial juncture coming to the end of this first half? This one is sent in, but it, that one is off target. And it's gone left and wide once again. And another wide, that's uh, wide number six in total for the Jocks. That's a uh, fifth wide for Sam Mulroy. So it stays a two-point game. One, three to four points. The goal after 25 minutes of play. A beautiful pass from John Clutterbuck sending Sam Mulroy in his way. Finished it superbly. As the, Mar uh, the uh, Pats get going again from that kick out. Desi Finnegan to Kieran Murphy. Murphy now looking to play it across. Matthew Panyi, the player waiting for possession. He takes delivery of that pass. Trying to get skip around the challenge of Tom Gray. Does well, Panyi, sending it up along the sideline. Kieran Murphy has stayed forward. He's got, trying to get around his man inside the 45 meter line, running into a lot of traffic, and he's got his free as well. The foul committed by the Nave Martin defence. That's going to be a free in. And Murphy there, well, really bottled up in that challenge. And he's down on the ground. Referee having a ward with uh, one of the Nave Martin players, Connor Morgan. So it's going to be a free for St. Pat's. And a chance for them to narrow the deficit with the clock telling us there are 27 and a half minutes gone in this uh, first half. So it's Mac Martin McEnany who's come up to take this one on. And uh, Martin McEnany, of course, part of the county panel. And, uh, of course, he's sending this one in towards his former county colleague, Craig Lynch. So let's see if Martin McEnany can make this one count. He had that earlier one on this opposite, the opposite side of the field, this near side. And that one, on that occasion, fell short. Let's see now if you have the distance in this one. This one is sent in, and that one has gone right and wide. I make that St. Pat's first wide of the half. So first wide, 28 minutes in, so it stays. Nave Martin 1-3, St. Pat's 4 points in the Anchor Tours Loud Senior Football Championship quarterfinals. These two teams looking to become the third team into tonight's draw. The draw later on, of course, will be on an open basis. Doesn't matter if teams have met previously. That's the same across all the grades. They can meet again now. It's on an open draw basis later on as uh, Owen O'Connor tries to get a flick on that one. Instead, it ball falls into Owen Laverty's path. Now Owen O'Connor has it. Owen O'Connor flicking it forward up towards, uh, towards Cahill Grogan. Cahill Grogan now has it. Gets it away as far as Darren O'Hanlon. 
Darren O'Hanlon has to be careful now not to give away. He's been swarmed out of it. Two players trying to get, a, get that ball away from his path. And a great defending by Neil Martin. But in the end, they've given away the free. And now, uh, Carl, I think it's uh, Carl Grogan there has uh, gone in on his man. There's a Neil Martin player. They're not too happy with that uh, challenge. There's a, a player down on the ground. And it's Owen Callan, Owen Callan, the man that's on the ground. And now a bit of sorting out to be done here by referee Colin, uh, Colin McCullough. Now, so let's see what the course of action may be. But it's uh, Owen Callan that is on the ground. Whatever that incident that took place happened after the whistle had been blown. And uh, still Owen Callan down on the ground. And uh, Rory Duffy is the player that's been spoken to now by referee Colin McCullough. It is going to be a free when this uh, situation is sorted out and Rory Duffy let's see if it is going to be a card it's a yellow card for Rory Duffy so a yellow card that's the torch Pats player picking up a yellow and it's Rory Duffy this time with the yellow card and the end result is that it's going to be a hot ball so Owen O'Connor in on this one for St Pats and uh, also there was uh, Wayne Campbell it's the Pats who come off best, best out of that it's Owen O'Connor sending that one in but that was a bit of a rushed attempt and that one goes harmlessly wide that's the second pass wide in this uh, in the matter of minutes it stays 1-3 for the defending champions four points for St. Pats we're into the opening the first minute of uh, first half injury time won't be too much to be added I would imagine by Colin McCullough so it's the jocks by two here's Craig Lynch now with the kick out out towards this near side Owen O'Connor racing to try and get this one ahead of John Clutterbuck. Owen O'Connor gets the final touch on it, but it is a Nave Martin ball, and it's Clutterbuck. It's going to take this one short. Chips it up towards, in towards Owen Callan. Owen Callan recovering from that knock that he picked up moments ago. Here is Sean Healy. Sean Healy over towards the far side. Is there another scoring chance perhaps before the short whistle? Nave Martin will certainly hope so, and they'll be, hope, they'll be hoping it's obviously they that create it to try and re-establish their three-point lead but there isn't time for any more because there is the half-time whistle from referee Colin McCullough a game that started frantically with that, those early scores 16 seconds in Owen Callan giving the defending champions the perfect start but back came St Pat's very quickly with Cahill Grogan's free and soon after then we had Conor Whelan restoring the jocks advantage at two points to one the teams then well the scores dried up then we had to wait nine minutes for the next one to arrive that came courtesy of Cahill Grogan's free that level up at two points apiece Back came Nate Martin to take the lead with Tom Gray's effort 20 minutes in. That left at three points to two. But then the Lordship men enjoying a good spell. They got the next uh, two scores, both again from Carl Grogan Freeze. The first of those in 23 minutes, levelling the teams, uh, levelling the match up for the third time in the first half before Grogan's free. Soon after, his fourth point of the first half put the uh, Lordship men ahead for the first time at four points to three. And then we had the final score of the half, and that arrived... Uh, that goal, that marvellous goal taken by Sam Mulroy, set up brilliantly by John Clutterbuck and Sam Mulroy, who had his fair share of point scoring opportunities and misses indeed up until that point, but he made no mistake finding the bottom corner of the net past uh, goalkeeper Martin McEnany and that score giving Nave Martin the lead back and that's a lead that they hold here at half time we had no further scores then in the run into half time we had another, a number of missed opportunities at both uh, ends Nave Martin finishing the half with six wides St Pat's with uh, two both of those misses coming towards the end of the first half but here at half time well it's uh, bubbling over nicely it's uh, certainly uh, no means done and dusted. Nate Martin with a narrow advantage for themselves, but they still have work to do in the second half, and St. Pat's will feel they are very much in this game. Only two points between them, and so here at a half time at the Grove in the Castle of Ellingham, the cha champions ahead, but it's a delicate lead. Two points of difference. It's Nate Martin, one goal and three. St. Pat's, four points. We'll be back to you in just a few minutes' time for coverage here of the second half from the Grove in Castle of Ellingham.
Yes, and you join us back here at the Grove in Castle Bellingham. Second half about to begin with Colin McCullough all set to throw the ball in. So we're turning around with the champions, Dave Martin, leading by two points at the break. One, three to four points. Just waiting for the last of the umpires now just to get in uh, position. Just a reminder that later on, the last of the weekend quarterfinals coming up in Sabanon. A seven o'clock start for the clash of St. Feckins and the Gerald Lines. A repeat of the 1983 county final. So, uh, and don't forget as well, that semi-final draw across all three grades, the senior, intermediate and junior. That draw taking place at a quarter to nine tonight, live on LMFM Radio. And Colin McCullough now has thrown the ball in. So a half an hour plus to decide the toward of the quarter-final spots in the race for Joe Ward. And uh, John Clutterbuck straight away coming onto this one. That one is intercepted though. Good defending by Matthew Panney now gets that one out. Back across it goes and... Uh, Darren O'Hanlon now getting his hands on it. So just like the start of the game, the first half it was uh, the Martins exerting the very early pressure. Here's Owen O'Connor, Kieran Murphy now flicking it into space. The man who's uh, on the ball now is the number 23. That is uh, Alan O'Connor who's come into the uh, action, it looks like. And there is a free and a foul. And uh, Alan O'Connor who's come in. Alan O'Connor has come in for Rory uh, Duffy and straight away Alan O'Connor making his presence felt by winning his team that free. So a chance now for St. Pat's, this uh, trusty boot of uh, Cahill Grogan to uh, make it a one-point game. And uh, so it's Grogan now with all four of his team scores in the first half. Here he comes now on the edge of the D. This one looking good from here. Now that is a over the crossbar, Cahill Grogan and crucially... It is the Lordship men getting the opening score of the second half and that now makes it a one-point game again. One, three, two, five points. Just over a minute gone in this opening half. And St. Pat's, well, that would have been the target, I'm sure, to try and exert the early pressure in the second half and start asking questions again of the champions. Ball comes to this near side of the field, picked up this time by, uh, by, uh, to, by uh, Jack Murphy. Doesn't uh, hold on to it, though. And now it's St. Pat's in possession. It's with uh, Jack Murphy. Murphy now plays it across to Desi Finnegan. Desi Finnegan now directing the traffic, if you like, there at the centre of the field. And Carl Grogan sending it on. Not the best of balls from uh, Grogan, though, when he gives it away. And it's a uh, turnover for Nave Martin. The game, perhaps, now livening up now once again here is Sean Healy Healy now that's a great looking ball on it goes now as far as uh, Conor Morgan Conor Morgan just decides to hold it up for a couple of seconds decides now to bring it inside looking for the pass joining the attack now it's uh, Paul Beryl Beryl now collects it man running from the far side is John Clutterbuck going for the pass Clutterbuck takes the receipt of that one now he's running past his man still Clutterbuck has a look up thought about going for a direct ball in instead plays a short one to Sam Mulroy in towards the centre again here's John Clutterbuck once more, Clutterbuck now trying to get past the half challenge there of uh, Alan O'Connor, the substitute. Still there, uh, Clutterbuck though has to be careful not to give it away or not to give away the free indeed. Here is uh, Conor Morgan. Conor Morgan, so it's still Nave Martin coming in the attack inside the past half of the field. On it goes to Wayne Campbell. Campbell now flicking it out towards uh, Sean Healy. Sean Healy now. Sean Healy now sending it forward up towards Tom Gray. Back to Sean Healy once more. Challenge going in there by Val Leddy. Nothing. Illegal and that's to the referee. Now it's with uh, Bloody once more on the 45 meter line. Back to Healy once again. So it's Sean Healy. So 1 3 to 5 points. One score that free from Carl Grogan. The free one by Alan O'Connor. Putting one point between the teams. Here's Mick Fanning now. Mick Fanning. The uh, Martins now committing bodies uh, forward to try and break down this St. Pat's uh, defence. They have possession. Played forward as far as Conor Whelan. Conor Whelan probably hasn't been as involved as he usually is so far in this uh, game, but that could all change. Owen Callan are running into his own man. Back out it comes now to Sean Healy once more. Sean Healy, player looking for possession. And that's uh, Conor Healy. Conor Healy takes it on. I know Conor giving chase. Can he finish it off with a point? That's, uh, that's an excellent effort and it's an excellent score. And it's Conor Healy who has got the point. Conor Healy. And uh, Conor Healy wouldn't be our usual source for a score, but he's got one and he's taken it exceptionally well. Conor Healy puts it over the crossbar, almost four minutes gone. And the second half, and Nave Martin restore their two point cushion for themselves. It's now one, four to five points. So there's another sub coming on the Pats team. So Pats making another change. We we'll just check in a moment to see who's coming off, but it is a change. And it is, uh, it's Jack Murphy, the man that's coming off the field. Jack Murphy, it is uh, coming off. We just checked to see who is coming on here for the Lordship men. Well, it's a change in attack here. Is Owen Laverty now coming forward with it down this near sideline? 
collecting it well. It was uh, Jack, was, uh, was uh, Joe Connor. Joe Connor, he's been smothered out of it, three players around him, and in the end, the jocks get the free. Good defending, tigerish defending by the champions. They know what it's all about. Mick Fanning taking it uh, uh, quickly. It's Jason Woods, I think, is the man that's come on, number 22. That's the change for St. Pat's, their second all duration in this second half. And now Nave Martin with their two point lead back, but it's not a big lead by any means. Far side of the field now, Val Leddy has possession. Val Leddy now sending it on to Owen Callaghan again. Owen Callaghan now shadowing him all the way is uh, Owen Laverty. But it's now with John Clutterbuck. John Clutterbuck, he was tripped from behind, he's got the free. Now there's a Pats man down just behind the referee. That's going to result in a stoppage. Just a reminder of how these uh, teams got to today's quarterfinals. Pats finishing runners up in Group 2 to Newtown Blues. They did finish ahead of the Marcus and score difference, having lost to the Loud Village men in their opening match, 110 to 18. That late drama, of course, Martin McEnany, that excellent free that looked perhaps as if it was the winning of the game at Clannagill Park that night, but not so. The Marcus tagging on the final three scores to eke out the two point win. And then in their second and final game, Pats needing a result against the Blues and the duly obliged coming out on top, 11 points to 1 6. And that had the effect of knocking the Marcus out and putting the Lordship men through as runners up in the section. Here is John Clutterbuck. This one is off target, right and wide from the county man. First wide of the second half. So it stays. One goal and four for Nave Martin. Five points for St. Patrick's. The semi-finals, of course, across all the uh, three grades, they are all fixed for next weekend. So whoever emerges, there'll be a short turnaround, short preparation, short lead-in into next weekend's semi-finals across all the three grades. We have the outstanding junior quarter-final as well to come and choose tonight. Glide Rangers against Lan Lera. Both those teams will be in the hat for that draw later on. The semi-final draw, but that tie, that outstanding one being played on Tuesday night, we do believe that's going to be played at Clannagale Park. Good interception and a vital one there from Jack Murphy. Got his hand in the way there and he's turned it over. And now Sam Roy has it. Sam Roy now. What can he do with it? Right at the centre of the field. Goes for the long direct ball in. Trying to pick out Conor Whelan. Bush in the end, too much on that one. That pass from Sam Mulroy and it rolls out harmlessly wide. Wide number two for Nave Martin in this second half. Six and a half minutes gone in the second period. It stays Nave Martin 1-4. St. Pat's five points. Two between the teams. A low scoring contest here at the Grove in Castle Bellingham. Good crowd as well for this one. Always a good atmosphere, a homely atmosphere here at the Grove. And uh, here's Kieran Murphy now picking this one up. Kieran Murphy plays it across to Matthew Panny. Panny now for St. Pat's on his own 45 metre line. Has the pace just to outmanoeuvre Conor Whelan. Here's Desi Finnegan. Desi Finnegan now has to be careful not to run into trouble. Out towards Kieran Murphy again. Kieran Murphy now flicking it in towards the middle. Man getting his hands in it there was the substitute. That was Alan O'Connor. Alan O'Connor now to Matthew Panny over towards the far side. And now it's with Conor Grogan. Grogan now has a look at tries to take on his man, decides not to do so in the end. Now he goes for the fist and pass towards Kieran Murphy. Kieran Murphy now. Kieran Murphy now plays it across towards this near side, waiting for the pass is Joe Car Joe Connor. He plays it into the path of Owen O'Connor. Connor to O'Connor and it's Owen O'Connor under pressure from Valletti. Was that touching the ground? It was by Mick Fanning. That's the third of four time. That's uh, Monas the boys have been penalised for that. Mick Fanning touching the ball on the ground. He's given away the free. And now we have a chance of another Cahill Grogan score. He's got five points so far. All five of his team scores in this one. All from freeze as well. So let's see now if Grogan can land this one. So very accurate to date from these situations. This one is going to be from his hands. It's about 28, 29 metres or so out from the post. Right hand side shooting into the road goals. Sizing himself up, steadying himself. This one is sent in. Oh, that's not going to tail that's tailed off to the right and wide and that's a, a rarity in this game from Carl Grogan but it is a wide and it says a two point game Craig Lynch takes the short kick out as far as John Clutterbuck Clutterbuck now towards Samuel Roy, Samuel Roy far side of the field trying to cut him down there with Owen Laverty but he skips past the challenge and in the end the free goes against Samuel Roy and just uh, pushed his uh, opponent away there and a little bit of frustration perhaps and uh, it's going to be a Pats free. Pats free just uh, stand side of the field. So nothing coming to that there for Nave Martin from that short kick out, that quick kick out from Craig Lynch. Sam Roy giving away the free. And now St. Pats only what, two points adrift. One, four, two, five points. As Aidan McCann now tries to pick this one up. 
Aidan McCann now under a lot of pressure. Valletti trying to get his challenge in. Was, uh, he let the rest into the ground. He doesn't release the ball. He's given away the free. It's going to be, it's going to be a monster to boys. It's a Nave Martin free. The referee is bringing the ball forward. Sean Healy anxious to take it quickly. And now John Clutterbuck has it. Clutterbuck now coming soloing forward. Has a look up. Now goes down towards the corner. Conor Whelan now reacting quickest to this situation and he collects it on his chest. Now, can he finish it off at a point? He's looking for his first score. That's an excellent one. He gets it. We said he's been having a quiet game. Not anymore. He's put it over. Excellent point from Conor Whelan. That's more like it from Conor Whelan. That's more like it from the defending champions. They've got the score off it. One goal and five to five points. It's back to a three-point game. And Conor uh, Whelan, the man who scored the late goal against the Feckins in... Monas Boyce's uh, first outing of the campaign some weeks back. Well, he's got a point for himself. And he'll be looking to build on that now for the remainder to try and put this game to bed. But it's anything being put, but, but being put to bed at the moment. It's only still only a kick of the ball between him and his own O'Connor. That one is blocked down into the path of Tom Sullivan, running into two challenges. Tom Sullivan has to be careful not to give it away. He's trying to get it out. Because under the legs of one of the players, back out it comes as far as Owen Callan. Owen Callan coming under pressure from Lenny Gray. But uh, the uh, Monaster Boys defence has done its job and they've averted the danger and they've got it out now towards Valletti. Valletti now looking at his options, decides now to flick it towards, uh, towards this near side. It's Jack Murphy now has it. Jack Murphy inside towards Sean Healy. Healy now on his own 45 metre line. Down it goes now towards this near side of the field. Desi Finnegan has to be careful not to foul Tom Gray, but that's exactly what the veteran midfielder has done, the former county man. And I think he's going to see perhaps a card as well or not a card, but it's uh, just a note for Desi Finnegan, a tick, and he's avoided the card on that occasion, but that uh, tackle that went in means that it is going to be a Monaster Boys uh, free, which, uh, show, which uh, John Clutterbuck will take, and uh, that injury still being attended to. It's Tom Gray, the man that's down on the ground, but the referee happy to let play resume. Now we have Jack Murphy in possession. Plays it right across. Here's Conor Whelan. Now can he get another score for himself? He takes it on his right foot this time. It goes across the goal. And it's gone left and wide. Wide number three for the Jocks in this second half. 11 and a half minutes gone. A reminder again. Nave Martin, one goal and five points. St. Pat's, five points. Pat's, of course, with a bit of history between these teams. And, of course, at management level, Fergal Reel, the Nave Martin coach for the last couple of years, did a number of stints as St. Pat's coach, of course, involved in all those previous successes. Has never done three in a row, though, as a, a manager of Fergal Real. That's a record I'm sure he'd like to put straight here with the Monaster Boys men this season. He's been involved in a few two in a row, all right, with the Lordship men over the years, but not a three in a row. And uh, Pats have possession. They have a free, which Darren O'Hanlon is lining up. Just over 12 minutes gone in this uh, second half. I think there's another change, another change now coming on the Pats team. And uh, former Dublin uh, player, of course, Johnny McGee. Well, he's the man running the line for St. Pat's this season. Matthew Panyi is the man that's coming off. Adam is Darren, Con Darren, Con Darren Connor wearing number 20 is the man that's coming in. So Matthew Panyi has done his day's work. His team still chasing this game. They have three points to make up, but they're very much in it. They'll not be throwing in the towel. They have proved sticky opposition. For a lot of teams over the last few years, even though it's, what, seven years now since they won the last of their seven Joe Wards. Many thought that was the end of them, but in fairness to them, they've kept, they kept battling on. They were in a semi-final, of course, back in 2018. And uh, you have to say it did exceptionally well to come out of the group as well. In a group this season containing the Blues and last year's runners up the Moctis. And now the referee has blown his whistle and it is going to be a free in for St. Pat's. So a chance for them now to pull another one back. And inevitably, it is Carl Grogan that's lining this one up. The referee with the notebook out once again. It looks as if it's Mick Fanning he's speaking to on this occasion. Mick Fanning returning to the team after suspension this, uh, this evening. So it's Carl Grogan. It's a yellow card for, uh, for uh, Mick Fanning. And by my reckoning, I think that, is, that might be the first jocks player to uh, enter the referee's notebook. Now, let's see what Carl Grogan can do with this uh, opportunity. It's on the 20-metre line to the left of the post and nothing that Craig Clinch can do to prevent that from going over the crossbar it's Kyle Grogan's score it's Kyle Grogan's sixth point of the uh, evening and that one now makes it one goal and five for Nave Martin six points for St Pat's so it's back to a two point game 14 minutes gone in this uh, second half all to play for here at the Grove in Castle Bellingham ball knocked back into the path of uh, 
Owen Callahan for the Martins, flicking that ball forward on towards Conor Whelan, getting more and more involved now as this second half uh, ticks by, boosted by that point that he got, getting possession of it there briefly back. Now it comes to Sean Healy again. Healy taking on his toes, holding forward, inviting the run on his outside of uh, Owen Callan. Still Callan going forward. And he's been shadowed by Alan O'Connor. Gets the uh, gets the ball in as far as John Clutterbuck. He lays it off. Here's Connor Whelan. Now can he finish it off for the point? He was under pressure. It's going to go wayward. It's still in play though. Down this uh, in towards that corner. Good defending by Joe Connor and Joe Connor. Pulled and dragged there, and he's got his free. Takes it short. Owen Laverty now getting his hands it out towards this near side. It comes. It's with uh, Darren Connor. Darren Connor, the substitute. Now it's with uh, Aidan McCann. McCann in towards the middle. Pat's coming on the attack again through Darren O'Hanlon. Darren O'Hanlon decides to skip past uh, Connor Whelan. Now it's with Carl, Carl Grogan again. Grogan now flicks it to his outside. Here's Aidan McCann. Aidan McCann now. Challenge going in from Sean Healy. And the, uh, the Martins pushing them in further out the field, force them into that lateral passing. Here's Owen Laverty. Owen Laverty now, a diagonal ball. McFanning may have uh, read it best of all. And he's, has he been fouled? No, to the referee. Scampering after this one on the far side is Jason Woods. Does well. He's in there ahead of his man and he's managed to retain possession. Showing plenty of composure. It's still uh, Woods. And is he fouled? He is. And he's got his free. Well, he kept at it and at it. He wasn't giving up on it. And uh, he's got the free. And a great tenacious play there by the Pats man. And it's going to be the free in. And it is going to be Carl Grogan coming over to take it. So great play there by St. Pats. Well, they're certainly not. No question of them throwing in the towel at this stage. They're still behind. They're two points to drift. But they're still very much in this game. And a change now coming. Paul Beryl, a double change coming on the Nave Martin team. Paul Beryl is one of the players making way. And uh, those changes now just being completed. The man that's coming in here, Mark Whelan, one of those that's coming on. Let's see now if Carl Grogan can land this uh, score. Also going off there, Connor Healy is uh, making his way off the field. So Grogan now, as we focus in on this free on the 13 metre line. Here comes Grogan now from his hands. Has he got the accuracy? He has. Another excellent score from Carl Grogan. That was a pressure opportunity but it now makes it a one point game one goal and five to seven points we have almost 17 minutes gone in this second half that's Kyle Grogan's seventh point all the scores have come from Kyle Grogan and all from freeze so you could say the Pats really have a, an over-reliance in the boot of Kyle Grogan but it's worked out for them well so far they might need a better spread in the last 10 minutes perhaps to win this game but who knows anything still possible here Connor Wheeler now has in the far side Samuel Roy now flicking it inside here is Jack Murphy Murphy now oh, to John Clutterbuck Clutterbuck running into a challenge and Owen Laverty gives away the free John Clutterbuck staying on the ground and Owen Laverty has given away the free so one the difference between the teams but uh, the Martins now with a glorious opportunity of extending the lead back to two. Well, you could say in those couple of earlier games, Nave Martin didn't really get out of second gear in the two group matches, did enough in both matches against the uh, Feckins, and then second day out against the Dreadnoughts without extending themselves, let's say. And today, you could say that's probably the case as well. Uh, John Clutterbuck now is up on his feet. And, uh, well, Nave Martin would be hoping, of course, the experience of the last couple of years, even the few finals that they lost back-to-back, -back, the... Uh, tight affairs, one or two of those games where that, they, that bit of experience will tell in the closing stages, but you'd have to say as well that there's plenty of experience as well on the Pats team, they know how to win tight games later on as well, here's Conor Whelan and Conor Whelan makes no mistake with that left boot of his, and that one now restoring the Jocks two point lead, one goal and six, that's nine it's seven points for St Pats we've almost 19 minutes gone in the, in the uh, second half so just about leading still Nave Martin but well, it's not uh, it's not a big lead or anything like that here's Tom Sullivan now that breaking ball works out to his advantage now chipping that ball picking, trying to pick out Conor Whelan he, hand, he holds his hand up calling the mark and Conor, Conor Whelan has won it well was in ahead there of uh, Conor Grogan and now let's see if Conor Whelan can land his toward point of this second half and he can't you know he's sent it right and wide wide number four for Nave Martin so that's 10 altogether, 10 wides in total here for the Monaster Boys men. That'll be a statistic that Fergal Reel will be looking back on later on and certainly something that he'll be looking to address. And uh, 
Ready for this kick out now from Martin McEnany. There's another change coming on the Pats team. Man that's coming on here Tiger is Connor. Tygo Connor wearing number 13 has come into the action. So Tygo Connor is coming in for the Lordship men. Aidan McCann is making his way off. So that's the latest change being made by Johnny McGee. Well, will these changes work the Oracle in the last uh, 10 plus minutes? Martin McEnany with this kick out. We saw the Pats lose late on in the opening round against the uh, Marcus. They'll be hoping that that won't be the case today, but they're very much in this one. Here come, uh, here come the Martins out, playing the ball across their own 45-metre line. John Clutterbuck flicking it forward. That ball now played up as far as... See, Evan Whelan has come in as well, I think, wearing 17 for Monas the Boys. And uh, Paul, that, that was Paul Beryl's replacement indeed, so Evan Whelan is into the action for the Jocks at this stage of the game. Here is Owen Callan. Owen Callan now calling for it with his hand up was Sean Healy. Took the responsibility there of calling for it and collecting it. Back now to Tom Sullivan once more. And across it goes to Owen Callan. Callan now breaking inside the 45 meter line. Still Owen Callan. His team leading here by two points on the 45 meter line. Up towards Sam Mulroy. Mulroy now has a sniff of the post. It's taken to the deflection. Martin McEnany all the way back there under no real pressure. And that ball has been turned over. And now Kyle Grogan way back in his own defence here. Pat's only score so far. But his points have kept his team in this game. No question about that. Here's uh, Darren O'Hanlon now decides to try and take on his man. Seven against seven. In it goes now. Man in possession is uh, Ty. O'Connor the substitute has to be careful now not to overplay it or try to give away the free it's been intercepted it's been taken away good defending John Clutterbuck in there it was Owen Callan in fact and he plays it forward up towards Conor Whelan Conor Whelan a whole challenge going in high challenge on Val Leddy by Desi Finnegan and uh, has to be careful Desi Finnegan there but that's certainly a free and Darren McDonnell I see is is uh, coming in as well. There's another change coming on the Nave Martin team. Tom Gray is coming off, and uh, Dara McDonald, wearing number 18, is coming in for them. And uh, Desi Finnegan still being spoken to by the referee. It is going to be a free for Nave Martin, and it's a yellow card for the former county man, Desi Finnegan, arising out of all that. Bit of pushing and shoving going on off the ball as uh, John Clutterbuck prepares to take this free. And uh, Colin McCullough now just in to talk to his linesman over there, Aidan Shevlin. It is going to be John Clutterbuck then with the free. His team leading by 1627 points. We have 22 minutes exactly gone in the second half. So it's Clutterbuck. Goes for the short one. Picking out Tom Sullivan. Flicking it back to Clutterbuck once more. Soloing forward with it over that far sideline, still taking it on himself. Still, John Clutterbuck has to be careful not to let it go out over the line. He just is going to send this one in, it's going to drop short. Kieran Murphy underneath this one for St. Pat's. Was there a little bit of a nudge? There was. That is going to be a free out, a nudge in the back on Kieran Murphy. Free out for St. Pat's. Now, can they get the next score in this game? Kieran Murphy now, Kyle Grogan way back there, sending it on as far as Darren O'Hanlon. Darren O'Hanlon now to. Conor Grogan, Grogan now just decides to stand it up a bit in towards the middle, towards Carl Grogan, Carl Grogan now, and again the meat, the meat in the sandwich, and bottled out of it, and he's got the free, uh, the uh, Martin supporters not too happy at that decision, but referee saw it differently than the Dave Martin supporters, it is a pass free, they trail by two, but still enough time, here is Owen Laverty coming forward, Owen Laverty, short pass to, uh, to uh, Kevin Toner, Tevin Turner, the ball sent forward. Pats now. Well, they're going to have to start going for the jugular now shortly because there's only seven minutes to try and turn this situation around. But it's only a two point game. The ball flicked forward. Here's Owen O'Connor. Owen O'Connor gets past uh, Mick Fanning. Still Owen O'Connor. Can he finish it off with a score? Goes for the fisted pass and he's got it. The fisted score and he's got his score. Owen O'Connor with the point. Absolutely crucial and couldn't have come at a better time. Great team move there by St. Pats and they've got the score off it. One, six, two, eight points, and now the Pats supporters beginning to find their voice. Almost 24 minutes gone. Well, this is now championship football, knockout champ championship football at its very best, perhaps. Can St. Pat's draw level again? They're only a point adrift. We really have a, a battle on our hands now at this stage. Oh, pure kick out by Craig Lynch. 
Could be a chance on for St. Pat's. Can uh, the uh, Pats punish uh, that poor kick out? Back out it comes now as far as Jason Woods. Jason Woods back to uh, Conor Grogan. Grogan now has to step on the brakes and try to pick out his pass in the opposite direction. Kieran Murphy has it. Kieran Murphy goes for the score. Is it on target for Murphy? It's gone in on. It's gone left and wide from the centre half back. Kieran Murphy. That was a chance. That was a chance. No question. But only a point between the teams. 24 and a half minutes gone. Still time for anything to develop and anything to uh, happen in this game. I can tell you, nobody heading from the e for the exits uh, here early, I can tell you that. And of course, if it were to end in a draw here after 60 minutes, we would have extra time. This tie has to be decided on the day. There are no replays. It has to be decided here in the Grove this evening. Great catch by Valletti. He sends that ball on now towards Conor Whelan. Conor Whelan now. Can he finish it off at a point? Trying to stand him up here is, uh, is Kevin Toner. Still Conor Whelan. Back out it comes now as far as uh, St uh, Wayne Campbell. Wayne Campbell. And Torn finding Owen Callan. Owen Callan. That's off target Owen Callan. And uh, Darren McDonald trying to keep it in play. And he, no, he doesn't keep it in play. It's gone out. The umpire's uh, arms are outstretched. And that is a wide. That's wide number five. That's 11, I think, in total now for Nave Martin in this game. 25 minutes exactly gone in this uh, in this second half. It's 1-6 for Nave Martin. That's nine points. It's eight points for St. Patrick's. The seven times champions. Ball now in Pat's possession on their own 45 mile line. Back it comes now as far as uh, Kevin Toner. Toner now has to be careful not to give away possession because, well, Sam Roy is looming large in there. Here's, uh, Con here's uh, Conor Grogan. Conor Grogan now has possession. Heading up towards the uh, centre of the field. Flicking on to Owen O'Connor. I don't know what he was thinking of there. Oh, really, that was a giveaway pass. Owen O'Connor trying to wrestle it back. He might just do it, and he does. Running into a challenge there, and he goes to ground, and the Pats have got a free. Pats have won a free for themselves. Owen O'Connor, well, it was a wayward pass initially from Conor Grogan, but the Pats somehow end up getting the free out of it and got, have got possession back. Here's Desi Finnegan now, far side of the field. Pat's coming forward now. They need to go for a referee playing the advantage with his hand raised. Still coming forward with it now. The man in possession is Tygo Connor. The substitute in it goes as far as Craig Lynch, but too short into Craig Lynch's chest. He clears his lines over towards the far side. Darren O'Hanlon now underneath this one. The, uh, uh, the Martins trying to break out of defence with it. It's with Owen Callan. Owen Callan up as far as Conor Whelan gets in ahead of his man. Still Conor Whelan. Conor Whelan out. Oh, that does exceptionally well. Sells the dummy to Kevin Toner. Sending it forward as far as Sam Mulroy. He goes to ground and he's given away possession. Over on the far side, Desi Finnegan has it. Desi Finnegan, he's been fouled by Sam Mulroy. It's going to be a free for St. Pat's. And Pat's now, how you feel, have the momentum here to try and go for the equalising point. We have 20, almost 27 minutes gone. Over three minutes of normal time to go. This is a real Battle Royale developing here between St. Pat's and Nate Martin in the quarterfinals of the Loud Senior Football Championship sponsored by Anchor Tours. Here's Carl Grogan. Carl Grogan in towards the centre. Here's Conor Grogan now. The Grogan's combining. Still Conor Grogan has it. Being stood up there by Stephen Campbell at this, uh, Wayne Campbell at the centre of the field. Back out it comes as far as uh, Conor Grogan once more. Now man in possession is Joe Conor for St. Pat's. Joe Conor has it. No, can he have to? Well, they have to walk it closer to the Nave Martin goals because the clock now is beginning to tick down. We're inside the last three minutes of normal time. It's a one point game, one six to eight points. Referee having a look at it, he hasn't blown his whistle. Play continues. The jocks have turned it over, though. They've got possession back. It's Wayne Campbell who has it. Wayne Campbell now flicking it back to Mick Fanning. Cool heads required now as far as the Nave Martin are concerned here. Have they done enough to win this game by the, by the minimum? We still have. Uh, we still have two and a half minutes of normal time to play and whatever injury time that has to be uh, added and the jocks now will they be happy to try and just retain possession and count down the clock but it's a very delicate lead a dangerous lead far side of the field now it's with Owen Callaghan Callaghan now Owen O'Connor trying to Cut out his angles, but still John Clutterbuck now in possession. He's trying to move it forward into the scoring zone. Back out towards the 45 meter line it comes. Here's Valletti coming on to it. Is he going to go for direct? No, well, he, could try, he plays it in. Uh, with Steve, uh, Wayne Campbell picks it up. Now it's with uh, Sam Mulroy. Sam Mulroy turns around and Sam Mulroy puts it over the crossbar. And Sam Mulroy has got the point. Has that clinched it for the defending champions? Sam Mulroy, certainly a quiet game. By his standard, Sam Malloy, he got the goal earlier, but uh, hasn't been as involved, let's say, as he normally is. But his goal, and now JP his point, J JP Rooney is coming in now just to try and steady the ship, I suppose, for the last few minutes. But that point from Sam Malloy arriving after 28 minutes of play makes it now one goal and seven for the defending champions. Eight points for St. Pat's, two between the teams. We have 28 minutes and 44 seconds exactly gone in the second half. Far side of the field now, it's Conor Grogan who has it. Conor Grogan. 
Well, the, uh, Pats, they're going to have to try and go for it here. They're going to have to try and commit bodies forward and hope for the best here because at the moment they're heading out of the championship at the quarter final stage. They have two points to make up. They certainly settle, I'm sure, for extra time at this stage. But that point from Sam Mulroy may, just may, be the insurance score here for the defending champions. Ball played forward, but it is in Patson, still in possession now, with Conor Grogan. Conor Grogan coming, soloing forward, trying to stand him up and trying to close him down as Conor Whelan. The Martins as well, committing bodies back now to try and break up this move. Oh no, Conor going down a blind alleyway, but he's managed to hold on. He's got the pass in as far as Conor Grogan. Back out it comes again. They're going to have to go a bit more direct. That ball dropping in. Mick Fanning gets his, uh, his two fists on that ball. And somehow they come out with it. But only as far as Owen Laverty. Owen Laverty picks it up. And the Pats have won it back. They're coming forward with it now. Here's Joe Connor. Man in the overlap. Out towards this near side. It is Darren Connor. Darren Connor. Back to Joe Connor now once again. Joe Connor now flicking it inside. Not the best of passes. Owen Laverty. Goes, uh, goes to ground, trying to pick it up on his toe, comes back out as far as Keir Murphy, doing well, the Pats are throwing everything at it now, they're not throwing in the towel by any means, they still have it, out towards the centre, is there still one last twist in this game, here's Owen Laverty, Owen Laverty now to Kyle Grogan once again, Kyle Grogan, they need to walk it closer to the goal, not the best of kicks from Kyle Grogan, it's a Gary Owen effort, hands go up on this ball, it breaks out as far as, it uh, looks like John, uh, like Owen, uh, Owen Valdetti indeed, referee signals that Valdetti has given away, he's been penalised, and he's given away, he's given away the free, the Pats have a free in, a free in, Sam Mulroy not happy with that decision, he's pushed away from the referee though by Mick Fanning, there is a player down, it's a Maeve Martin player, well this match really ending in a welter of excitement, we have 30 and a half minutes gone, we're in the first minute of injury time, two points between the teams, 1-7 for Maeve Martin, 8 points for St. Patrick's, is there a winning goal in St. Pat's I wonder? Well, well, they'd be happy to take their point off this. Is there still enough time for them to perhaps still get possession and force an equalising point to send this tie to extra time? But as things stand, Snape Martin, with that two-point lead for themselves, they are the team on the cusp of a semi-final place. It would be the 50-year running that they would secure a place in the last four. And uh, that injury still being attended to. And uh, we're just waiting now for Carl Grogan. The referee is uh, waiting for this injury to be sorted out before he allows Carl Grogan to take the kick. So, Carl Grogan, remember, with uh, what all but one of his team scores in this game, that other point coming from Owen O'Connor a little bit earlier on. And uh, time now running out with 31 and a half minutes gone. There will be added time now as a result of this injury. And uh, it is, uh, I think it's Val Leddy that's on the ground and looks to just to be in a little bit of agony. And uh, I'm not sure whether he's going to be able to play much part in the last couple of minutes of this game. And, uh, well, Conor Morgan. It's Conor Morgan, in fact, uh, that's the player that uh, has picked up that knock. Well, it looks as if he's anxious to stay on the field for the moment. So it's Conor Morgan, in fact. So uh, Morgan is going to stay on the field. Referee just taking a note now of the stoppage time. And Carl Grogan. We're about to resume play with this free. Looks as if he's going to be happy to take his point with 32 minutes gone on the clock at the end of this second half. Here he's lining this one up. He needs to make sure of it. This one is sent in and this one is over the crossbar from Carl Grogan. Carl Grogan with his eighth point of this, uh, of this game and his eighth free. That now makes it one goal and seven to nine points. One the difference between the teams. We have almost 33 minutes gone in the second half. Possession, absolutely vital from this kick out. More direct from Craig Lynch. Up goes down, Desi Finnegan collects it brilliantly. Desi Finnegan, and he's called, and he's got the uh, opportunity. By, oh, challenge going in there by uh, Owen Callan. Referee now blows his whistle, and he has given the free against Owen Callan. So there is still a chance, a chance here of perhaps an equalising score. And if, it, if there is to be a levelling score, it will probably end up in a draw and result in extra time because now we have 33 minutes played but the Pats still have to create that opportunity and Nave Martin will be doing their damnness to try oh and that's a loose pass and Conor Whelan has picked it up another point I think will certainly put this one to bed out it comes now as far as JP Rooney JP are using the old all the experience going down towards the corner just wasting up a few seconds valuable time on the clock and the Martins now perhaps won't go for the effort they'll just be happy now to absorb this a bit of pressure and try to Hold on to it. Challenge going high there. Referee playing on though. Out towards the near side it comes. Here's Owen Callan. Now he sent it in towards Darren McDonald. The substitute. Oh, he collects it well. Can he get the score? 
Oh, no, didn't have much height in it and he should have made well it should have went dead really and instead the Pats have turned it over we continue playing on there might still be another chance for St Pats here to force the equaliser running into a challenge there was Darren O'Hanlon out it comes now Pats coming on the attack oh no Connor was he held he was held it is going to be a free Tom Sullivan furious at that decision but it is a foul on Owen O'Connor and it's going to be a free. It's going to be a free for St. Pat's. So they may have the one final opportunity. 34 minutes and 15 seconds gone here at the Grove in Castle Bellingham. It really is exciting stuff here in the dying embers of this game. It is Owen Laverty now. Owen Laverty to Conor Grogan. Grogan. They have to throw caution to the wind here, St. Pat's. They have to throw the kitchen sink at this Martin's uh, defence. J.P. Rooney has to get his challenge in. Oh, and uh, well, a little bit harsh there in Desi Finnegan. The free has gone against Desi there. J.P. Rooney has got the verdict on that occasion. Well, I'd have to say I thought that was harsh there in Desi Finnegan. And perhaps now the Pat's chance has gone. They needed to retain it. They needed to try and get it into a scoring position. But instead, it's a free for Nate Martin. Taken short by Samuel Wright to Sean Healy. Sean Healy. So... Has the opportunity passed? Oh, no, Connor, careful not to give away the free in towards the centre. Tom O'Sullivan has it. Tom Sullivan now on it goes as far as Wayne Campbell. Wayne Campbell didn't make a, a, a clean pass out of it. Comes out towards JP Rooney, though. JP now just moving backwards. And there is the final whistle. Referee blows for full time. And Nave Martin have done enough. They have well of the storm. But fairness to Pats, they threw everything at their opponents, the defending champions in the second half, but they have come up short and Nave Martin have lived to fight another day, but it's been another battle here for the defending champions. Didn't make it easy on themselves and the game was certainly in the melting pot up until, right up until the end, but St. Pat's just couldn't muster that final opportunity, the final chance of a score that would have sent this game to extra time. And so it is victory for the defending champions. The three in a row remains a distinct possibility from the, for the men from Monaster Boyce. But again, they've done it the hard way this afternoon. But uh, all credit to St. Pat's, a real absorbing contest. A little bit of a lull during the first half, but the game then coming to life in the second half once again. Carl Grogan, with all but one of his team scores, his points, his frees, kept his team very much in it. And Nave Martian, well, doing enough. Samuel Roy with the goal, of course, an, ex an excellently executed goal in the first half, which helped his team lead the break by two points. But the, the Pats were certainly well in it throughout the second half. Kyle Grogan's points, keeping them in contention. But in the end, Samuel Roy's point in 28 minutes, opening up that two-point cushion again for the Monster Boys men. Kyle Grogan's free is eighth, a score three minutes into injury time. Well, that in the end proving not sufficient to force extra time uh, in this uh, game. And so the defending champions march on. They join Newtown Blues and RD St Mary's in the semi-final draw later on. And that leaves just one issue still to be decided. And that will be decided tonight in Stabann in the seven o'clock game, the last of the weekend quarterfinals. The all green and white clash between St Feckins and the men from Blackrock Haggardstown, the Geraldines that game coming up live on LMFM online a little bit later on plus of course that semi-final draw across all the three grades on the radio, on LMFM radio from 8.45 but that's where we finish off here on LMFM Sunday Sport and on Lou TV I hope you've enjoyed our coverage this afternoon a big thanks to our sound engineer Mark Bourne our cameraman Mr Shane Cunningham we'll talk to you again very shortly but again the final score here at the Grove and Castle Bellingham victory for the champions, one goal and seven for the men from Manister Boys, nine points for St. Patrick's.